Good morning. I am coming to you from inside the greenhouse where we've added a little bit more skylight uh, behind me and up here. The plants down here are getting good light through the wall, but it just needed a tiny bit more. So today the moon is in Pisces, which uh, Doug's big goal for us this year was to do like the olden days and plant by the sign. So I have today to get a bunch of stuff in soil blocks before the moon goes out of a suitable planting time for like a whole week. So I'm just going to get on it today, which is good. Um, I have got all these trays behind me to fill and I'm going to be starting some veggies and some later flowers that were too early to start the last time. Um, so right now though, I do have some things coming up. Um, a lot of these are slow germinators. So they're not quite all up yet, but I do have a few things. I have got some calendula that is doing really well. Um, probably going to pull um, a little fan into here. Uh, we do have the heater, which produces some breeze, but not really enough. Because what I don't want is for them to get leggy um, and not get any stimulation. So I remember going through my old greenhouse and brushing the plants because it encourages them to make bigger stems. So we just added a tiny fan last time and it really gave them enough stimulation to um, be a little stronger in the stems. And then over here in my some of my flowers, I have some amaranth um, that's coming up nicely and some elecampane that's coming up. And then a few little weird guys here and there that I think might have migrated with the watering. So we'll see what they are. <laughs> and uh, I'll just get started. Okay, today I am going to try to surprise Doug by moving the cows myself and collecting the eggs and doing all of his afternoon chores because he has taken up sort of an accidental, he kind of accidentally got a part-time job helping to repair barns because after we got ours repaired, um, he decided he wanted to help out and do some repairs with the company that's doing it. So anyway, Girl power, we're gonna see what we can get done. setting up some fencing. I've been grazed two pastures off. I've got another six and a half acre pasture here that we're going to pasture. Uh, I can actually pasture it off and still have time for spring hay to come in. So what we're going to do is we're going to run three long fences through and then run across fence through. Maybe, maybe three long to make a four, like a four pasture uh, plot here. So we'll be able to rotate about six or eight times through here and get us a little more recovery time on the last two fields. Oh no. 
It's okay. That's a, it's a free redo. Crap happens. That's right. All right, so um, we are still milking Myrtle. She, uh, I really thought, would dry off herself. Her babies were born like a year ago, um, but she has not. So we may end up having to dry her off, but right now she's great. She's getting plenty of calcium. We give her some grain from Hinton Mills. They make a goat, dairy goat mix for us and um, alfalfa pellets. And I just wanted to show you your teats. We've already prepped them. We're not milking for us right now, okay? This is an extra pail because she is so late in lactation that I don't want to make like cheese or anything at this point. And we're, again, hoping she'll just dry off. Um, but we are milking for the pigs. We just give it to them. Um, we could dry her off. This is a normal goat teat, okay? Now, normally if I'm milking for us, I've done a lot more prep than I did now. And I am... I would like get rid of the first few streams and milk into and do milk into a strip cup to check for mastitis and all that stuff. She is um, she is extremely hard to dry off. Every time we dry her off, it is miserable for her. So that's why we're trying to kind of hope she would slowly let up on her own. This teat is I'm sure why she was a dairy reject. Um, she has this blown teat on this side, but she's an excellent producer, so we're pretty sure that's why they got rid of her. Um, so far, the daughter we retained from her last year and milked has not had any teat issues. So I really think it was probably mismanagement and not genetic. But this year will tell the tale because we've kept both her does, uh, Maggie and Marigold, and we're gonna see what they look like in milk and make sure their teats hold up before we breed her anymore. So um, this is her giant teat. It takes a little bit different technique. It takes a little bit technique to get it started. I'm sure it's uncomfortable for her at first, but then she lets down and does really, really well. Um, this is how I do her teat. Doug does it a little bit differently. Um, but once you get it going, it's fine. And then I can do both hands. And she is just a sweet, sweet girl on the milk stand. As long as she has food, she is very happy. And we just go to town. It takes a little while to milk her out because God love her. She's just still producing a crap ton of milk, even though we don't need it anymore. Um... We're kind of hoping she'll dry herself off because, like I said, she was very miserable the last time we've, the last two times we've had to dry her off. Um, her udder just gets horrible and we just try to milk it enough to take the pressure off and she's still miserable. So she has dropped her production a little bit. I would never, like when she's in full production, we can't use this little pail. We have to use a big one. So we're hoping just over time we're going to keep her calcium up and hopefully she'll dry herself off. and you're drooling. You're so excited. Oh, yeah. oh God, run, Doug. Ooh, that's good stuff, yeah. Oh, look at here. Look at here, them teeth, man. <laughs> oh, jeez.